Friends, good afternoon and welcome to another edition of SPTV News Live, where we keep you up to date on the latest shenanigans in the criminal cult of Scientology. So the cult held its most important yearly event in the way of the IAS, that stands for International Association of Scientologists, and this was held at L. Ron Hubbard headquarters in East Grinstead, Sussex, England, also known as St. Hill Manor. And this also helps to quell the rumors that um, Tom Cruise is leaving the cult anytime in the near future, as well as some other people that you'll see. Um, it's been rumored in the last couple of years. Well, let's just say the last six months specifically through the um, press outlet and rumor mill that because Tom Cruise hasn't been seen uh, in England at any of the cult headquarters in the last few years, that might have to do with the pandemic and the fact that Scientology hasn't been holding events in general because of that. Nonetheless, there was speculation that, hey, man, we haven't seen him at the UK headquarters. He's probably leaving the cult. He cares about Surrey, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and put those rumors to rest and cover the three-day event uh, where Tom Cruise is very much involved. And also you'll notice the lack of, um, also notable is the absence of certain celebrities that are usually there. Plus we'll go into a little bit of history about uh, the MC of this year's event, the fanatical Jenna Elfman, and how many people have stuck it out through all the years and how many people seem to be fading away, or as you'll see, have passed away, unfortunately. Getting into today's story, Tom Cruise is still Celebrity Top Gun at Scientology Gala in England, along with the unbelievably fanatical um, Scientologist Jenna Elfman, but notably, John Travolta was absent. Why do you guys think that is, by the way? We'll speculate at the end, but um, Tom Cruise has always been much closer to the elf, um, David Miscavige, the cult leader, and... John Travolta is not liked by David very much. So you'd think this wouldn't be going anymore, but Tom Cruise is still Top Gun at Scientology, the religious cult. Oh man, I love, who is, this is um, Showbiz 411. This is the first publication where I've actually seen them call it a freaking cult. Congratulations, man. I like this publication even more. This is despite three broken marriages and a teenage child he refuses to see because she's not in the cult. Oh man, you got to love this publication. But Tom showed up this weekend in the UK at the annual Scientology Gala. It took place over three days, by the way, my friends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And Tony Ortega, which we're going to go over some of his sub substack, goes over the three days and with some very interesting photos, not least uh, Dharma and Greg actress Jenna Elfman. She was there with her husband, Bodhi, and Bodhi is the nephew of composer Danny Elfman. I don't believe Danny is a Scientologist, um, currently accused in a lawsuit of sexual assault by one woman and accused by another. Just as a quick side note here, my friends, let me throw you in the chat. You know, I've always, um, I'm not surprised that uh, Danny Elfman is involved in a, you know, with some sexual escapades or whatever, shall we say, just so I... um. I don't, uh, just so I don't say anything that, um, isn't accurate, but I remember watching, um, Oingo Boingo and the song little girls back in the day. And this song alone made me think that Danny Elfman, you know, might eventually wind up in some, uh, sexual troubles. I'm just going to play you a couple of seconds of this because I don't want to get the video taken down for, uh, cause I'm sure this is super copyrighted, but do you guys remember this song? And then we'll get back to the story. But I just wanted to jump off a few of these characters that we cover in these articles just to um, fill in some information. Danny Elfman. Yeah, he doesn't look like a freak or anything. Okay, that's enough. I can already feel the copyright claim hitting, but I'll link this video in the description box if you want to know more about that song. But in light of uh, recent events, and also since it's been X amount of decades since that song came out, came out it does seem to have um, some disgusting encoded meaning. 
you don't really have to read between the lines too much. So, the, so Dharma and Greg actress Jenna Elfman was there with her husband, Bodhi. And Bodhi is the nephew of composer Danny Elfman, who you just saw, and not surprisingly, is currently accused in a lawsuit of sexual assault by one woman and accused by another. So we'll see how that turns out. Not seen at the cult fest was John Travolta, who lost two important women in his life, wife Kelly Preston and BFF Kirsty Alley, RIP. They were each members of the cult. <laughs> I love this fucking publication. And each succumbed to cancer. Travolta also lost his son, Jet, 16, in bizarre circumstances after the boy, who Travolta and Preston for years denied was autistic, and then they came up with like Kawasaki's disease or some weird um, bullshit thing since then, fell and hit his head during a seizure. By the way, it's just speculation, but um, I would suggest that they, because of Scientology's beliefs, Jet might have been taken off of his seizure medication because they don't believe in psychiatric drugs. And that's why he fell and hit his head in the shower and they had to make up some bullshit um, excuse slash disease to explain that away when perhaps John Travolta could have been tried for negligent homicide. So there's a picture of Tom Cruise looking exactly the same as he did 20 years ago, at least in that picture, and all the smiling faces that undoubtedly paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by being donors to the IAS to be there and to have a picture with fucking Tom Cruise. Let me stand by and make sure everything's running here. Okay, so Cruise, who won't um, have a new movie until 2025, and by the way, these pictures and the fact that he's still a Scientologist and it's gonna get worldwide coverage um, today and over the next few weeks, probably the studio executives aren't gonna be too happy um, because this hurts his credibility, I would suggest, um, in his movies, but luckily he has until 2025 for all this to calm down. So Cruz is all in on Scientology despite books, documentaries, and exposés detailing the cruelty, greed, and mistreatment. Recently, cult member Danny Masterson was convicted of rape and sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 20 to 30 years. After the group allegedly, allegedly but we'll find out more with the grand jury investigation and the upcoming civil trial, after the cult allegedly tried to cover up his crimes, Cruz doesn't care and neither do the other people who paid a lot of money, no doubt, for this party. Exactly. Can you imagine the cognitive dissonance where the Scientologists undoubtedly know all about Masterson because it's been splashed over the news, but they don't give a shit and they're being told something different in the bubble world, that it's all a Leah Remini conspiracy, there's nothing to see here, and the cult is expanding like never before. Cult leader David Miscavige was there, although protected enough, we assume, so as not to be served legal papers by former member Leah Remini, and others, by the way, who are also trying to serve him. Not a guest, Shelley Miscavige, to be discussed shortly, David's wife, unseen for years, and considered missing by Remini and many others. I would say missing is not entirely accurate, but it's good that um, attention's being kept on her because... We haven't seen her forever. So what's the breakdown? What actually happened during these three nights? Just to let you guys know, I remember going to the IES Patrons Ball here in Hollywood, California. It's this event where if you're a rich whale and you donate a shitload of money to the cult, you can feel like a Hollywood celebrity for a night and go to this extravagance. Uh, uh, it was held in a hotel one time, um, top-notch places in Hollywood where you can feel like a celebrity Everybody gets decked out and they just get on stage and ass kiss each other about and clap like whales about how much money people donated to the IES. Now, the IES was a slush fund that was created specifically to fund the lawyers, the private investigators, and the whole team to shut down negative publicity about Scientology to fair game critics, critics that speak out about it. And it's a huge war chest where... The donor gets nothing more than some stupid trophy and the accolades of his other cult members, but they um, actually get no product except to fund in the millions and millions and millions of dollars the defense that Scientology has to wage by being a destructive cult. It's expensive keeping a scam going, my friends. So let's get down to what happened during these three nights. Friday night, the opening night of the three-day party is the Elf's big show when he regales the crowd with an hours long speech. I mean, he fucking drones on and on at these things about the state of the cult and recognizes a few Scientologists with freedom medals. Those are people who have done extraordinary things in Scientology. 
i.e. disseminated, disseminated it to like five of their friends, which is a huge accomplishment nowadays. Dharma and Greg actress, again, one of the most hardcore fanatical Scientologists ever and the least likely to leave in my opinion, Dharma and Greg actress. And she's also known for, I believe, The Walking Dead or some spinoff of that. So she is a, still a working actress. Jenna Elfman and her husband, who's barely works, by the way, um, showed off their outfits that night. And we were interested to see that she was not only going to MC the Sunday night charity concert, but attend all three nights of the event. <laughs> what a trooper. Exactly. She's super hardcore. And by the way, if a picture is worth a thousand words, look at how evil these two look. I mean, you think that that wouldn't be a picture they'd want to um, kind of put out there or whatever, but particularly Bodie, he looks like he's ready to strangle the photographer. And you can see Jenna and such, um, you can see him aging. As for the venue itself, on Friday night, they bring in the biggest crowd they possibly can. And every year it's been fun trying to assess how many people they actually pull into the big tent on the St. Hill grounds. One attendee helpfully used a smartphone to film her journey to her chair early on Friday night when the place was not yet very full. And we were surprised to see from her footage that the place seemed less cavernous than we had expected. That's an understatement because look at that. They claim that they can get 7,000 people in there. And for this event, they were speculating there'd be 6,000. That doesn't even look like it holds a fucking thousand people. You'd see a bigger shot of it here shortly. There they are just before the event um, is about to start. How exciting. Another shot taken by someone else gives the view towards the back of the tent. We've always scoffed at the attendance figures that Scientology puts out as many as 7,000 some years. Yeah, exactly. This year, the tol they told the police they're expecting 6,000, but looking at the size of this place, we're thinking it holds more like 2,500, right? I would say that that actually looks like less than 1,000. What do you guys think, man? Unless I'm missing something back here, this does not look like more than 1,000 seats. But it's not unusual as Scientology always inflates their numbers, but that's kind of easy to see that that's not 6,000. The only image we've seen so far of the elf on stage giving his big speech Friday was pretty blurry. On Saturday, the row of chairs were cleaned out and tables were put in for the fancy patron's ball dinner as guests dressed up in black tie. This is the event I was describing to you earlier that me and my parents would go to and feel like big Hollywood celebrities for, you know, for a few hours. And they were have all the whales gather. And, um, you know, my parents, by the way, we were middle class to maybe lower class when we were growing up. And because my parents became multimillionaires and my dad would say through Scientology, it was impossible to get my parents out because they attributed like John Travolta would like Tom Cruise and like Jenna Elf went Elfman and Kirsty Alley. They get in at a low period in their life. They take off and then they attribute any success that they might have to the cult. And it becomes almost impossible to leave just like my pops, because he would always tell me whenever I try to snap him out of it, the few times I could talk to him, he would say, don't you remember the life that we had before Scientology, Doug? And look at how well we're doing now. Um, so anyways, that's the situation that, uh, I would say Jenna and all these other people are finding themselves in. And once that happens, good luck getting out. So on Saturday, the row of, so in reference to what I was just saying there, if you become a big whale like me and my, where, like my parents did, then you get invited to this patron's ball where, like I said, you can feel like a celebrity, a Hollywood celebrity for a day. If you just donate X amount of millions of dollars. On Saturday, the rows of chairs were cleaned out and tables were put in for the fancy patron's ball dinner as guests dressed up in black tie. Jenna and Bodhi were prepared. Again, I think the photographer said, give me the most evil cult stare down look you can give and we're gonna take a shot. Because seriously, that, that's very out PR for, for Scientology. They look extremely evil. And they've definitely changed. They look less theta, shall we say. And it looks like guests enjoyed some interesting delicacies. Again, when I go to these stupid patron balls, I just wanted to kind of eat a pizza and a hamburger because I couldn't make sense of what the hell was sitting on the table, but it looked very expensive and it looked um, very disgusting to me personally. I mean, I don't know if I want to eat out of a clam there with something in the middle, but I'm sure people that um, can appreciate food more than me would say, would be able to school me on just how um, delicious and, and expensive this is. 
but this is the kind of bullshit that they would um that they would put there you know a huge plate just to represent that but again it made you feel special and elitist and like you're at a hollywood party that looks halfway decent Anyways, um, yes, you can get fucked up at the IES event, by the way. They do have alcohol. I remember purposely getting plowed so I didn't have to listen to the droning um, of all the and backslapping accolades of all the drone members. Here's a mushroom, not to be confused with um, a real mushroom, which let's be honest, if you were to take some shrooms and go to a Scientology event, it probably would be a fucking blast. But of course, the main dish was really Tom Cruise himself who showed up in dozens of photos that we've seen, happy to pose with his fellow cult members at the ball. The point of Saturday night's banquet is to pay tribute to the cult's big donors, who are given new bowling trophies for the enormous amounts of money they've given to the IES war chest in the last year, and so Tom really is a dessert for them, an incentive to give, give, and give more of their freaking cash, and what an incentive. That's a good point. I'm sure that they, um, I wonder how much they had to beg him to actually go, because if he wasn't there, he was used big time to deflect from the Danny Masterson shit, I would suggest. All he has to do is flash that magnanimous smile, show that he's still supporting Scientology, and that kind of eases the cult member um, vibe, so that they're like, all right, if Tom's here, everything's on track, this Masterson shit is bullshit, And it looks like um, it's just business as usual. So he was a huge catch. And I do wonder how much Miscavige had to sell him on actually getting him to go there because he's taking quite a chance. I think he could have avoided this. He knows the press is going to get this. It's going to confirm that he's a Scientologist. But apparently this just proves um, how under the spell he's been for so freaking long. There's more people that have undoubtedly given hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars to be at this event. And I'm sure you have to pay, you know, really be a big donor in order to get a picture with the man himself. (laughs) It's interesting to see that one of the attendees mugging with Tom was French attorney Felipe Blanchet, uh, fuck, Blanchetier, who was indicted in 2015, along with a dozen others with former President Nicolas Sarkozy in a campaign finances corruption scandal. And these days is known for representing Russian oligarchs in trouble. Did anyone know he was a Scientologist? (laughs) That's another quick point, by the way. Scientologists often get involved in scams themselves. I don't think my dad did this necessarily, but people like Grant Cardone, people, you know, businessmen like um, Tom Cummings and all these people, because they're in a cult that kind of runs a semi Ponzi scheme slash pyramid scheme, because they believe in that, they have a tendency to get wrapped up in scams like themselves, like Grant Cardone, make a shitload of money, and then 20 or 30 years down the road, it usually catches up with them and they fall down and get caught. But they have a lot of criminals that they protect too in the cult, as we've uh, discussed with people that we've interviewed on the channel, specifically Chris Malin, talking about how they cover for um, pedophiles. But just to get this back, and I'm going to link this in the description box. This is from Tony Ortega um, this morning. So again, let's keep an eye on French attorney Felipe Blanchetier. I'm probably fucking that up. Um, And he was indicted in 2015, along with a dozen others, with former President Nicolas Sarkozy in a campaign finances corruption scandal. Very, very typical in Scientology. And there he is. Look at the dark eyes of this man. Only a matter of time, sir, before you and all all the other ones are going to be held accountable for this someday. We also noticed that the Florida electricity duo, Tom Cummings and Jim Bridgeforth, who together are the biggest cult donors behind Bob and Trish Duggan, were also in attendance, and Tom did not disappoint with the satorial splendor. As Mike Rinder pointed out, however, he was there with his daughter and not his wife, Victoria. They had a falling out. Who, was always, who always put on such a fashionable show, and we hope she's fine. There's Tim Cummings, one of the richest Scientologists ever, been in forever, and donates uh, millions and millions of dollars. I assume that's his daughter, unless that is. No, I'm just kidding. You can never tell in today's world. So Mike also spotted one of our favorite cult members, the Scientology Overshare. I'll leave a link in the description box if you want to know who this maniac is, but she's always oversharing on social media about her wins and gains in the cult of Scientology. And there they are, another uh, couple 
get to be a star for a night. So all in all, Saturday night banquet looked like a blast. We're looking forward to seeing some trophies in the next issue of Impact Magazine. I don't know if you saw, guys saw the interview that we did last night, but we got a Scientologist on the phone and I'm trying to get on their mailing list so I can get the Impact Magazine uh, and actually show you some of these photos because they'll be uh, explosive when they put out the glossy photos of what we're looking at now. And it'll be interesting to see the spin they put on it. Oh, here we go, man. On Sunday night, it was time for the charity concert. We're glad to see that our old friend, Chill EB, is looking rather prosperous these days. How many of you guys know rapper slash Scientologist Chill EB? I would say he's, um, he's more famous for being a Scientology celebrity than, I mean, he never made it as far as I know out in the real world, but he's always putting on these events, these rap shows, where it's all about Scientology. It's all about the cult. In fact, I pulled something up just to show you how long this guy's been in this thing for. This is from 13 years ago, and, and he's still shilling at the cult. And I got to tell you, even when I had an acting career, it felt almost more important to be recognized by my fellow peers, my fellow cult members at the IES event and stuff, feeling elitist and everything with my rich family and shit, than it did actually being a semi-celebrity in Scientology. So I know it looks ridiculous and it looks like a joke, but for Chili B and Stacy Francis and Jenna Elfman, these people that are maybe do have a career of some kind and even those that don't, it's a big fucking deal to be recognized in the cult, even though from the outside looking in, it looks ludicrous. So let's listen to Chili B, man, pimping for CCHR, which is their anti-psychiatry network. And this is from 13 years ago. And as you can see, he's blowing up with 796 views. Check this shit out. I would like uh, any member of the panel to describe uh, a typical ADHD in terms of symptomatology. So he's already talking about uh, ADHD, which the cult doesn't believe in. You can see here at the bottom. Oh, shit. Oh, I thought I was on mute. Okay, you can see here at the bottom, it says CCHR Florida Rock Festival 2010. Chili B performing, y'all busted, hell yeah. Mark, would you like to, since you see them in your practice. There, are, I mean, I think the panel has been frank in, you know, the difficulties here are immense in terms of, of uh, um, these, I mean, <clears throat> it is hard, it's very hard to know how to answer this question. Okay, here's a little story about this girl named Faye. She has a project due to turn it in a couple days. Study be a shrink and she wants a good grade. They send her to the school to watch the kiddies at play. She jots it all down, everything they do and say. One's chewing a pen and she writes it right away. One they talking to her and she looks the other way. Joey, he's in the chair, can't sit still, gotta sway. Oh no, she sees it's a problem. Writes them all down on the list so they can solve them. Label them all trouble and then we can resolve them. Then let's go to let's the... Let's be honest. This is kind of catchy, right? One in the chat if you think it's okay. Two in the chat if it's dog shit. My ears are busted. With a line of parents I mean, if called. you take out the bullshit lyrics, it's a, it's a pretty dope beat, no? It's gonna tell the parents that the kids are ill. Gonna fix up Johnny so he can finally learn to chill. When they swing in them legs, make them pop a couple of pills. Label them all problems even though... Okay, Star obviously not jamming with this. It has a, it has a bit of um, Will Smith like kind of light rap. It's, this obviously isn't gangster rap, but I think you're right, Star. This is total bullshit, but we're almost done. It ain't real. Uh, 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 so to win, we busting you. Y'all busted. Y'all busted. Y'all busted. home from working all day the teacher calls you all right if this is american idol sorry chili b you've been fucking um outvoted you're off my man okay so let's go i'll link it in the description box if you guys want to check it out for any reason but let's just say that didn't go over very well in the audience sorry chill nothing i can do okay just to give some history of the maniac jenna elfman and how long some of these people have been involved we're going to go back to some reporting that tony ortega did on his underground bunker um, not that long ago, but it goes into some history here. And also we can talk about Shelly Miscavige, who also, not surprisingly, was missing from the event. 
Shelly Miscavige on video, never before seen, never before seen footage from before her disappearance. And there's Shelly right there. And there's David. And this is a mission that's being opened up in San Francisco by none other than Jenna Elfman back in 2001. So here we are 22 years later, she's still pimping and emceeing for the latest IES event. And again, like I said, in her eyes, if I could put myself in her shoes, it's not only not silly to be invited to MC at the biggest Scientology event, she's probably absolutely thrilled. So Tony says, we have something very special for you today. The first new footage of Shelly Miscavige in many years and the best look at her on video ever. A brief glimpse from the year 2001, four years before she vanished. On January 18th, we brought you some new photos that have been taken at the September 29th, 2001 opening of a new Scientology mission in San Francisco, the aforementioned one set up by Jenna Elfman. <laughs> this is back in the day when celebrities were kind of being promised their own mission. I'm reminded of Patrick Renna, who is best known to people for The Sandlot, also starting up a mission. And back in the day, around 2001-ish, uh, maybe to say 2005, when Tom Cruise himself was going on like a big PR tour to, you know, trying to rally up all the troops in Scientology to really explode Scientology, each celebrity got their own little mission and uh, put a whole shitload of money into it. But the Mission Network has since, um, it doesn't really exist anymore. And David Miscavige has turned it into these things called ideal orgs. So, um, it was just two weeks after the September 11th attacks when the elf David Miscavige had put out a wake up call. Exactly. So right after 9-11, like any catastrophe, they take advantage of it and they get Scientologists to contribute more money because look at the state of the world. You know, look what's happening. Urging cult members to step up their involvement in the wake of what happened in New York and Washington. Part of that stepping up in, in involvement is to contribute to the very IAS slush fund that we've been discussing today. <laughs> So the event in San Francisco was packed with Scientology celebrities, <clears throat> excuse me, who have answered the elf's calls. The occasion was the opening of a minor mission south of Market Street, hence the Soma mission. By the way, isn't Soma the name of that drug in Aldous Huxley's Brave New World that puts everybody under mind control, which had been paid for by wealthy Scientologist donor Joe and, Kat and Cindy Feshbach, as we mentioned earlier, and of course, actress Jenna Elfman. And among the crowd, here we go, were celebrities Tom Cruise, so all the way back in the day, 22 years ago, he's still, you know, at these events. John Travolta, whose absence is notable. What do you guys think about that? I th if anybody's going to leave first, Tom Cruise or John Travolta, it would definitely be John Travolta. But he still loves the tech, man, and he still has to break the brainwashing. And maybe one more death close to him will do it, because if you have something tragic happen in your life, that can often be when you reassess everything. And then Kelly Preston, his wife, was also at this event, RIP, and Kirstie Alley, RIP. And Danny Masterson, not anymore, spending uh, life behind bars unless he gets out on a miracle on parole. Juliet Lewis, has been, who's been kind of um, always absent from the spotlight when it comes to being a Scientologist, but as far as we know, she still is one. Catherine Bell, who we have a video to do on actually, maybe later today or tomorrow we'll do it. Her, um, Catherine Bell's girlfriend, by the way, is also a Scientologist and that causes problems with being a Scientologist because you're not allowed to be gay in the cult. We'll discuss that later. Catherine Bell was not at this IES event as far as we know. So when one of our readers saw these photos, she tells us that she re it reminded her of something she'd seen on a DVD. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So this is important. What we have is 31 minutes of footage shot by someone at the event showing the setup, the speeches, the ribbon pole, and then at the end, the elf walking around with his wife, Shelly, and his, quote, communicator, um, Lou Henley Smith Stuckenbrock. And there's rumors that he's actually with her, Lou, nowadays. Maybe we'll have to bring Mitch, Mitch Brisker on to get more information on that. But that seems like who he hooked up with as Shelley was banished to CST, Church of, Scientology, Church of Spiritual Technology, many, many years ago. So let's go. Part one is, um, let me just see if there's anything worth pulling here. Okay, this is worth reading. So in the last two get decades, Miss Cabbage has decimated the mission system exactly it's no longer exists and scientology has shrunk drastically overall we're estimating that the current worldwide membership is twenty thousand or less and that is accurate 
But in 2001, Scientology was more robust and still held sway in Hollywood. I would say it still does hold sway in Hollywood, although not as much maybe. And the video begins with shots on stage outside the mission being set up for the grand opening. You'll briefly see Joe and Cindy Feshback, who were mission holders with Jenna Elfman and had financed the facility. There's the rich couple. And Jenna undoubtedly put a bunch of money in herself. Um, got Tommy D. Okay, so these videos are marked unavailable or they're private, but I downloaded them a while ago and have them on my hard drive. So if you want, I can actually put these up and you guys can see the video, but at least we get some pictures here. And again, we get some history on how long these people have been under the fucking spell. So part two is where the celebs gather. The video then turns to Scientology celebrities waiting for the event to start. Initially, we can see Danny and Chris, Christy, sorry, Christy, Christopher Masterson, Lindsay Bartleston, a C-level actress, and then Catherine Bell joins them, but not anymore because she's in a gay relationship, which is um, where she's surprisingly still a Scientologist. There's Lindsay Bartleston. There's the beautiful Catherine Bell. There's the rapist Danny Masterson, and there's his brother, Chris Masterson. Again, all these videos are privated, but um, I can upload them if you guys want to see them. It's not too exciting, but it just shows so many celebrities uh, in one area, just like the IS event. And this is only a mission opening. So now the event begins as Joe and Cindy Feshbach, Scientology leader David Miscavige, and Jenna Elfman take their places on stage. Cindy's up first, thanking the crowd for attending. She begins her remarks about the mission. This is important. She then calls up San Francisco Police Department Captain Tony Parra to hand him a proclamation, and he helps out with a few words of his own. What would a Scientology grand opening be without a local shill? Again, whenever they go into a specific place to set up a cult headquarters or a mission or an ideal org, they always safe point police officers and co-op them so they'll work with the cult. And we've covered that in previous videos uh, where we show how that happens at Celebrity Center here in Los Angeles. And I'll link those in the description box shortly after the video finishes. So more videos that are unavailable. Uh, Jenna Elfman's speech. Jenna Elfman is less of a stiff than Miscavige and her enthusiasm is plain. That is an understatement. She really is a fanatic. She's clearly put a lot of effort into opening this facility. Sadly, only a few weeks later, Scientology will end up selling the building and the mission was moved around to various locations. It's never amounted to much. So they probably put a couple million bucks into this thing and it's all for show, right? Because just a few weeks later, it's like, oh, sorry, Jenna. It doesn't look like you have your mission anymore. And then they have the infamous ribbon polling where after her speech, the fanatic Jenna then calls up her other celebrity buddies to join her on stage so they can pull the ribbon, officially opening it. Tom Cruise bounds up first, naturally, followed by Kelly Preston, RIP, John Travolta, Bodie Elfman, Kirstie Alley, RIP, Catherine Bell, probably declared suppressive for having an out 2D, and Juliet Lewis, and then Eduardo Palomo, and he's a Mexican Telenova star who died in 2003 of a heart attack at only 41. So here you can see Tom Cruise all smiles, just like at the event uh, over the weekend. Bodie Elfman, um, who we saw looking absolutely sinister in those previous photos. There's Feshbach, not a celebrity, but a massive contributor. Contributor Travolta, whose absence was notable um, this year. Kelly Preston, RIP. Kirstie Alley, RIP. But again, you can just get a timeline, man. This is 2001, and almost all the same people, minus you know two that couldn't make it because they were you know because they're not alive anymore. Um, you can see, you can see how powerful the spell of Scientology really is. Then everyone pulls in for a tight photo. There's the fanatic Elfman absolutely towering over the elf Miscavige. You can see Kirsty Alley over here and there's, uh, the lovely Catherine Bell. Jenna invites everyone into the facility for a tour. And the last thing we see on this segment is Travolta and Kelly Preston boogieing down the stairs. I think I'm going to upload the, this these videos in, in one like edited thing together. Cause it's kind of funny just to see how ridiculous they look and how comfortable they are in their own environment while they know they're not being filmed or so they thought they didn't ever think that it would see the, uh, the public would ever see it. So these videos are unavailable, but while we're on the subject, I do want to show you a clip from this before we end off. And this is the last video of Shelly Miscavige at the Jenna Elfman mission opening that you just saw. And um, like I said, let me know in the comments if you even care to see 
you know, all of that event footage. If not, we'll skip it. I don't want to uh, waste time uploading it, but if you want to see it, let me know and I'll throw it up. As an ex-Scientologist, the question that comes up more than any other question has got to be, where is Shelley Miscavige? Where is David Miscavige's, the current leader of the cult? Where is his wife? Where is she? What you're looking at is the last known footage recorded of Shelley Miscavige, and this is back in 2001 at a mission opening in San Francisco, right after 9-11. And this was a mission that was started by Jenna Elfman. So where is Shelley Miscavige, and is she, in fact, missing? I wanted to go back okay, to- Okay, I'll link that if you want to see more about that. But, you know, I do take issue with the fact that she's missing. We know where she's at. She's at CST. But um, like I said, it's good to keep tabs on her. Um, I just say that even if they find her and, you know, they approach her, she's not going to want to leave the cult because even though she might be disabused with her husband or ex-husband, shall we say, possibly David Miscavige, she probably doesn't like him. She still would most likely believe in the tech, her family's in it and shit. And because she's brainwashed, if the police or the FBI go in there and they say, hey, we're here to rescue you, she'd say, rescue me from what? Okay, let's see if we have any questions before we roll out of here. But just to summarize, you can see um, this gives a good picture of like who's in the cult and who isn't. I'm sure we'll see more photos that come out over the next week, um, not least when Scientology puts out their Impact magazine. So we can see what other celebrities and big donors are involved so we can get a current take on who's in and who's out. But just from throwing up Tony Ortega's article from 2001, right before 9-11, you can see almost everybody um, is still in, in 2023, minus Danny Masterson, of course, only because he's a rapist, and two people died, Kirstie Alley and Kelly Preston. Otherwise, they would, they would be there probably, too. Take any questions that you guys have before we roll out of here, and um, more to come probably later today and or tonight. Okay. If you have any guys, throw them in now, but I did star a couple. And uh, we'll just take these two up before we roll out, unless you have something else to say. So, uh, Nisa, how you doing? What makes Scientology think they can make up any numbers? That's a good question. One, probably because um, it's being shown to the internal bubble, uh, bubble world of Scientologists who are already brainwashed, hypnotized, and used to seeing fake, fake statistics in a certain way. This is hard to explain, and it's actually a really good question. Let me take a drink of water. Because I'm telling you, there's really no other way to explain what it's like being a Scientologist, just to give it in a nutshell, than being under a spell, under a hypnotic trance. Because I'll give you an example. I would go to these ridiculous David Miscavige, three-hour-long blustering events where he would throw up Propaganda videos, graph after graph, video after video, statistic after statistic that moves by so fast that your eyes and your mind can't catch up with the data. I think the three hour events alone are a hypnosis show, but there's no way to explain it because in the back of my mind, I was thinking, because he would put out things like, we just cleared Zimbabwe and um, New Zealand has the highest ever of Scientology Dianetics groups. It was all lies. But it goes by so fast. And in the bubble world, you can't tell how big Scientology is or isn't. Everybody only knows what their each org is doing. For example, I was going out here to Celebrity Center in Los Angeles, and we had a booming group of people. Everybody, you know, it seemed like there were thousands and thousands of Scientologists out here in LA. And since I'm not traveling to East Grinstead, going to the, you know, Portland, Oregon, you know, mission or checking out anything else. We take our word for what David Miscavige says in the events. So if he says it's booming, well, I know Los Angeles is, I know Florida is, why would I think that the numbers are falsified or why would it be any different? Again, we're not allowed to listen to or look at what they call M theta in the cult. That's anything negative. That would be everything from watching the South Park episode to watching Leah Remini's show. So we self-censor ourselves. We're in a bubble world of information control where we accept what David Miscavige says to us. One, because we believe him. Two, we can't, you know, verify outside sources. And three, we're in a hypnotic spell. And four, those graphs are going by so fast. You can't sit here and go pause and then say, is that accurate? So that's really the only way to answer that question, man. I mean, we were just in a bubble world. We have confirmation bias and can't confirm the numbers and will not in the outside world. 
So we just believe what the numbers are, and we don't necessarily feel like he's making them up. Although you make a good point, my friend, because there was a part of me looking back in the back of my mind where it, it did seem like some of them were making him up, but you just quickly dismiss them or whatever. So Star, yeah, Fear the Walking Dead. It was what Jenna Elfman was on. I stopped watching when she joined. Good for you, man. I mean, you know, the less, I don't know how you guys feel about boycotting certain actors, you know, um, but I find it hard to watch a Tom Cruise movie just because as good as some of his movies are, I don't like supporting that. It's a personal choice, but yeah, the more you hit him in the pocket, that's one way of delivering an effective blow to people still blindly carrying on with Scientology like Jenna and Tom, um, you know, and not having to face any of the, um, no reporters will ask him any questions. You know, Tom lives in a bubble world where he, this, you know, he could disconnect from Surrey and he just simply doesn't read the press. And there he is, man, hanging out like, um, as if that's, that's okay. You know, it's just fucking disgusting. Any other questions? Okay. Rosebud and me, how you doing again, my friend? I wonder what the staff feels seeing all the opulence at this gathering. Great question. Well, I know that when Tom Cruise, I think it was 2005, he was given the Freedom Medal of Valor winner, winner, Freedom Medal of Valor winner by the Elf, and that's when they get into a bromance man hug and they look like they were just about to go down on each other, and and David gives like Tom this huge medal and shit, and so many Sea Org members either left or became seriously disabused because Tom just started really going hardcore, pimping for the cult for like a couple years. You know, he was whispering into government's ears. He was promoting it all over the world. He was handling Scientology in Germany. He was doing all these things, which was pretty impressive to us public members. But the Sea Org members were going, because David Miscavige declared Tom Cruise the most dedicated Scientologist he ever knew. And the Sea Org members are going, oh, hell no, you didn't just say that. Because they're the ones that bust their ass 24-7, rarely get a, a, a day off, let alone a half a day off. Some of them have been working for 20 or 30 years. Some of these people are in their 70s and 80s. And when they heard that, man, some people did leave. And if they questioned uh, why Tom Cruise was so important, you can damn well better believe that they got serious ethics conditions. You don't have the fucking rank to ask why Tom Cruise isn't important. I don't give a shit if you've been here for 30 years. That looks like all the questions, my friends. If I miss any, please leave them in the... In the comments, and I'll answer them there, and it's only uh, appropriate. We do change up the outros, but we have to go with the Scientollywood one because it's only appropriate for what we've been covering. We'll see you soon, my friends. Please like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you on the other side. Dream. Some don't, but keep on dreaming. This is Hollywood.